The last known flightless seabird to live in the northern hemisphere, the great auk is truly an enigmatic species to have died out in the mid-19th century. With its distinctive black and white coloration and penguin-like appearance, the great auk has since become an icon of extinction, but there's much more to this extinct bird than meets the eye. All of the photos of great auk stuffed specimens in this video were taken at the Natural History Museum in London. Today, around 78 preserved skins, 24 skeletons and 75 preserved eggs are all that remains of this enigmatic species. Until at least 300 years ago, this bird was widespread across the Northern Hemisphere. Strongholds consisting of large breeding colonies of this bird existed in Newfoundland, parts of Iceland and Greenland, and even small islands off the coast of Scotland. As their name implies, these were large seabirds, with fully mature specimens potentially weighing up to 5 kilograms in weight and standing up to 85 centimeters tall, making them comparable to some geese in size. When first looking at a great orc specimen, one may immediately assume that they are members of the penguin family. However, despite many physical and behavioural similarities to penguins, they are in fact not closely related to penguins at all. Being a member of the Alcid or Orc family, the Great Orc's closest living relatives are in fact birds such as guillemots, razorbills and the iconic puffin pictured here. The main difference being of course that unlike the Great Orc, these birds are much smaller and have the ability to fly still. In most regards, the great orc resembles the actual penguins because they live much the same sort of lifestyle. Modern orc species such as puffins and guillemots are themselves great swimmers and will dive into the water to catch fish, yet their wings are still long enough to enable them to fly. With its much larger body and tiny wings, there's no way the Great Orc could ever have any hope of flying. Instead, the Great Orc sacrificed its ability to fly to become the ultimate swimmer and diver, repurposing its tiny wings and streamlined body to become the ultimate fisherman. Much like the aforementioned living orc species as well as penguins, the Great Orc relied on its flipper-like wings to power through water when diving after prey. But they had other physical adaptations as well. Their large torpedo-like bodies were perfectly streamlined for diving, and their extra-large webbed feet acted as the ultimate paddles, and were set unusually far back on their bodies to reduce drag while simultaneously propelling them forwards. One of the Great Orc's most distinctive features was its large and very powerful bill, which was able to slice through prey in a single bite, making it a formidable hunting tool. This beak was also laterally compressed from side to side, which made it extra streamlined, offering very little water resistance when the bird was diving. Like many other diving species of birds, the Great Orc's bones were also somewhat denser than the usual, which helped counteract buoyancy when diving. The bird also repurposed its large pectoralis muscles attached to the breastbone or keel as seen in this image for powerful sweeping through the water. This is yet another adaptation not unlike modern penguins. With all of these extraordinary adaptations combined, the Great Hawk was truly a devastating underwater hunter, able to hunt a wide variety of schooling fish including capelin and herring. This bird may have been clumsy on land and completely flightless, but in the open ocean it was truly in its element. Modern seabirds today, including modern orc species, are well known for gathering in large numbers for breeding, and the great orc was no exception. Being a flightless species, the great orc wouldn't have been able to access steep rocky cliff faces that other birds can, and so could only breed safely on the most inaccessible flat islands in the Atlantic. 
In ancient times, literally thousands of these birds could be seen gathering en masse on these small islands to breed. Possibly the most impressive of these strongholds was on the Grand Banks of Newfoundland. Around 500 years ago, however, these colonies suddenly became under attack. Sailing Europeans on the search for the New World stumbled across these vast colonies of birds and hunted them in large numbers, mostly for food. However, this early hunting was not the reason for the orcs' rapid decline initially. The real blow to the orcs' populations, especially in Newfoundland, came in the 17th to 18th century. Thousands of birds would be killed each summer en masse for the sake of their feathers, as feathers were a fashionable commodity at the time and even used in women's hats. This unsustainable and systematic persecution of the great orcs was so severe that by the early 19th century, the entire breeding colony of Newfoundland had been completely wiped out. The species as a whole survived, but after a devastating volcanic eruption in the Atlantic destroyed yet another small breeding refuge of the orcs, their only refuge was eventually Eldi, a small island off the coast of Iceland. Up until this point, scientists were still relatively ignorant of how the Great Orc survived, its ecology, its breeding cycles, or even how it had evolved. In many respects, scientific ignorance was yet another major factor in the Great Orc's extinction up to this point. During this era, preserving and stuffing dead specimens of animals and birds and housing them in large collections was a common practice even if eventually it would lead to some kind of scientific analysis. As the rarity of the Great Orc increased, prices for specimens went higher and higher, and more and more collectors were sent to Eldi to kill and bag specimens. This was a fatal misunderstanding, because in their ignorance, these individuals were pushing for more specimens to be gathered for examination, while simultaneously pushing the birds to their final fate. The last remaining pair of Great Orc specimens were killed on the island of Eldi in 1844. It is possible that one or two more birds may have survived after this date, but many scientists agree that because of its social nature, the birds could not survive in the most restricted of numbers for long. With no suitable breeding colonies left to regather numbers, the birds were truly functionally extinct. The Great Orc has since become an icon of extinction in recent history, along with the likes of the Dodo and the Tasmanian Tiger, for example. The tragic tale of the Great Orc is a grim reminder of how scientific ignorance and unsustainable practices in the recent past of human history can prove to be fatal for certain species that are already vulnerable. <laughs>